everyone and welcome back to Love's Teaching Will Travel, the podcast for educators who love to travel and the podcast for educators who are seeking career transitions and want to explore their options after years of burnout in the field of education. Now, last week, I know we missed an episode. Unfortunately, I was battling with an illness and now I am better and back better than before. So I wanted to just jump right in and just get back to some topics that we talked about before my um, brief absent, which was having Melissa from Millennial in Debt on the podcast. Now, thinking about where Melissa has come from, you know, transitioning out of the field of education into corporate and then now into entrepreneurship, a topic I really wanted to bring to you this week was having work-life balance, right? It's something that many educators struggle with and it's something that I really wanted to take, you know, take a deep dive into in connection with wellness and well-being and just knowing when to stop first and foremost and knowing when your body is telling you to do something you need to listen. So to jump right in, I really wanted to think about the concept of juggling the demands of work and family and, you know, personal well-being, because in today's fast-paced society, I know many of us are doing side hustles. I mean, look at me. We're doing side hustles. We've got, you know, family obligations. We've got work. Some of us have to juggle two, three jobs at the same time. So it's a lot for educators who are in the fields were already burned out to be doing additional things on top of those layers of family obligations and everything else that they have to deal with. Like there are so many teachers out there that I know of personally who have their day job, they're working in the classroom, but they're also tutoring in the afternoon or they're working at night or they're bartending, which when you really think about it, that sounds like a really hectic existence. So something I really wanted to cover was How do we achieve the things that we're looking for? How do we achieve the things that we want in this life without experiencing that overwhelming feeling of not only burnout, but just feeling defeated, right? How do we get past that with all the things that we're juggling? Like sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, in a, in a, a circus and I've got like balls juggling all at once and it's a lot. So if I know it's a lot for me, I can imagine for other educators out there how stressful this can really be. So taking a little bit of a deep dive here, I wanted to look at some strategies for maintaining that work-life balance and how we can work on this even during a career transition, right? Because again, over the past two seasons, I've talked about, you know, embracing teaching and teaching abroad, teaching online, finding different options to just stay in education. This season, I really wanted to look at not only teachers who have transitioned out, right? Or who have transitioned to teaching abroad or teaching online, I wanted to really look at those who have left the field or are trying to transition out of the field and what that feels like, right? Like what's going on? Because unfortunately, you know, let's address the elephant in the room here. We can't all have it all, right? And as much as we try, right, there's so much that goes into having to maintain your career and, you know, having to deal with family and just even the struggles of dealing with your own professional development, the things that you want for yourself. There's a lot that comes with that and it can be overwhelming and it can affect you as an individual, but it can also affect your family and, you know, other people by extension. So, thinking about managing your career, your social life, and a family, it might all look glamorous, right? Like social media makes it look so glamorous and amazing, but it comes at a cost, right? And it's something that it's it's important to find that balance, right? A, by prioritizing yourself, first and foremost, right? Prioritizing, you know, having realistic expectations of 
whether it's transitioning out of the field of education, maybe going into a different you know, aspect of education, maybe leaving the classroom, doing something else. You have to have realistic expectations, not only of yourself, but of the entire situation, right? Sometimes it's okay to say no. It can be a lot more empowering to say no than it is to say yes. So let's look at finding balance, right? One strategy is setting boundaries. You want to make sure that you're setting boundaries, not only for yourself, but for other people, right? Designate, you know, specific work hours that you can work. Let's say you have a side hustle that you do after, you know, work. Let's say you work in a school district, you get home at like 3, 30, 4 o'clock. It's a pipe dream. Let's say you get home at 3, 30, 4 o'clock, right? You want to make sure that you're setting boundaries where you have time for yourself, you have time for family. And if you do have to jump into that side hustle, just make sure that you're being realistic of the timelines, right? So that you're taking care of yourself. You're maintaining your own health. I know sometimes, like I've gotten to, to a point in my life where I'm really trying to reclaim my health, right? Like considering the myriad of health issues that I have and, you know, family, family history of this, I really try to take control of my health nowadays because I know what it can do when you don't take control of it. When you don't put yourself first and put your health first, you can end up in the hospital. You can end up, you know, unfortunately six feet under. So be mindful of how you're taking care of yourself while you're juggling all these balls in the air, so to speak, because unfortunately it's better well, not unfortunately, but fortunately, it's better for the balls to drop than for you to drop. And it's something that I really want you to take seriously and consider, right? It is better for the balls to drop than for you to drop. Like, just really think about that, right? So moving on, you know, a little bit deeper into self-care, right? with all the hectic things that we have to deal with, we have to not only put our physical health first, we have to also put our emotional and mental well-being as well at the forefront. This is something I've been really, you know, again, taking control of with meditation, with yoga, and finding ways to kind of weave that into my life, right, in a way that's sustainable, because I know it can be difficult when those days get rough. It can be difficult when you're having to deal with so many things going on in your 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 sphere, right? And sometimes practicing mindfulness, you know, engaging in regular exercise, yoga, hobbies, things that bring you joy kind of really help to bring you into a forefront of happiness that kind of takes a bit of the weight off of all the stress of everything else that you're dealing with, right? So again, let's go back to balancing time management, your own time management, right? Is about managing mindset. I know many of us, especially those of us who maybe come from immigrant families, first, second generation, what have you, you know, a lot of us have this mindset of go, go, go. We have to do our best and be successful, but we have to change our mindset in order to change our situation, right? If we're not putting ourselves first, right? If we're not being mindful of the things that are important for us, and building a level of resiliency into that, it's going to be difficult to navigate waters when things get really, really rough, right? So make sure that you're, A, focusing on the present. I know it can be so easy to get caught up in, you know, the to-do list, and I've got these things to do next week, and next month, and next year, but try to stay in the moment sometimes, and this is, again, something that I'm trying to work on. Stay in the moment, right? Look at all the things that you do have rather than the things that you don't, right? Think about ways that you can look at the bigger picture rather than thinking about all the negatives that are happening. Rather than thinking about the to-do list, the extensive to-do list that you have, think about all the things that you have in the moment, right? Because in my mind and something that I've learned and grow, you know, I've been able to grow with is that I can only control what I can control. I can't control other people. I can only control 
my decisions, my feelings, my words, right? I can't control that of other people. And this has kind of helped me to stay grounded in A, taking care of myself and B, helping to take care of my family in a better way because I am A, setting boundaries, B, controlling myself, right? And my situations and not really relying on external factors to kind of make me happy or make things work for me. The only thing you can do is control yourself, your words, your feelings, right? And this can not only help you to set healthier boundaries for yourself and for others, but it can help you be even more successful in that transition, whatever it may be, right? If you're transitioning into a new career, setting those boundaries early can help you to find a better situation you know, knowing who you are, knowing what you want and not jumping from, you know, a toxic environment into something even more toxic, right? So that's one thing. The second thing is just really thinking about the things that you love to do and the things that make you feel good. And if transitioning out of teaching is going to make you feel good, then jump away, right? You know, sometimes we're afraid to take risks and if taking that risk is going to make you happier, make you more fulfilled, I say jump away, right? Move into that new space, move into that new sphere with those people who who can help you move into the spaces that work best for you. Now, thinking about the long term of transitioning your career, I have a couple more episodes coming this season to just support those of you who are like, you know what? I love education. I love teaching, but I've had enough, right? I've, I've been able to connect with teachers again, who are abroad, who are teaching online and they love it. And it's amazing, but not everyone's in that space. And I just want to be able to support those who are still on the fence, right? Those who are like, you know, I'm tired. I love this career, but this is it for me. I want to be able to help those people right now, right? Because I know it can be really difficult, whether it's the financial side of it, the toxicity side of it, what it may be, right? I just want to be able to provide that support, provide those resources to help you transition in a more, you know, sustainable way for you without being so stressed out, without, you know, feeling so burnt out. I mean, you're leaving the job or you're trying to leave the job because you're burnt out. You don't want the transition to burn you out as well. So this is where, you know, I wanted to take today's episode because again, it's important for us to find balance. It is an ongoing journey. Um, work-life balance is is something that many, many times I, I think of as a myth <laughs> because there's so much that goes into creating that balance, right? Starting with shifting your mindset. But it's really important that we do realize it's a journey and not a destination and it's going to take time to get there and it's going to take time for us to really find the space right that requires us to have self-understanding self-awareness patience right and the ability to set boundaries and practicing those boundaries because these things don't happen overnight and it's okay i want you to know that it's okay right they don't happen overnight. And so don't put so much pressure on yourself to, you know, have all it, have it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. And I don't expect anyone else to have it all figured out, right? This is real life, right? We're humans. And sometimes finding that path that's right for you takes time, right? But I'm here to to support i'm here to provide resources right like i said with my book i'm here to inform and inspire right speaking of my book remember you can get it on amazon love teaching will travel (laughs) had to insert that there right um it's important to remember that i am here as i said to inform and inspire and you can always connect with me on youtube you can connect with me on social media um I believe you can even like submit voice notes here as well on, um, on the podcast. So just keep in mind that even with all the things that we have to deal with, we have to create some type of strategy for sustainability long-term when it comes to our 
work-life balance, our health and well-being, because that's honestly the only way that we're going to be able to A, take care of ourselves, take care of others who we care about, and just live a life that's enriching and fulfilling as we want it to be, right? So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Love's Teaching Will Travel. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, follow, um, subscribe because, you know, I also post this on YouTube. So remember to subscribe, follow, and make sure that you're you're leaving comments so we can start an insightful conversation. Um, it's important for us to work as a community and connect as a community. Again, I don't know everything. And so I'm always open to hearing from other voices. This is why I also have other people come on the podcast to share their knowledge and you know their expertise with us so that we're all working here together. Now, this is it for me today. It has been wonderful connecting with you. I look forward to connecting on the next episode. That's it. Bye.